I don't, I don't have a great intro planned, I'll be honest. I'm just kind of like, kind of winging it today. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us who you are? Okay. Hello, I'm Aranza Ferrari. Such a funny last name, to be honest. <laughs> I'm 20 years old and I'm a SCORE student. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, how often do people comment on your last name? Pretty often. Pretty often they make jokes about it. I would imagine. But, but it's pretty fun to have a good last name. Especially if you're a Formula One fan, I mean, I, Sundays for me are religious because I every morning I sit down on my couch to watch the races. And can you tell us just like what you are studying right now, how you got into that? Well, okay. Let's start there. I'm studying communications at the University of Lima with a, with a track on journalism and advertising and marketing. I got into communications because n n being a nutritionist apparently didn't work. I failed chemistry at the IB, so I was like, this is not gonna work. So let's go to the University of Lima. I checked what I what like seemed more fun to me and I said, I said communications. Okay, let's try it. Three years later, I'm studying communications. How much of that is gonna be like, you know, applied towards your credits in the new universities, do you know? Depends, I've got a decent amount of credits here. I think like a hundred something, okay. but it depends on each university. If they consider that my syllabus are not good enough for them, then okay, okay. I got accepted, but it depends. How did you get started thinking about like maybe going to study abroad? I had this idea since I was 17 because I, I wanted to go to Argentina, but back then I was really immature. So my parents said, wait a few years. Things start, Things didn't seem really good looking in the political and the health context. So my parents and I decided that it was the best idea for me to go study abroad. Okay, so would you say it was more those current events in yes, Peru? current events. Yeah. Tons of people my age are looking yeah. to go study abroad. It's sad. It's sad because you don't want to leave home because of the circumstances. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Where did you start looking? What countries are you thinking of applying to? What universities? I'm thinking of applying to Spain, the UK, and the Netherlands. I'm applying to USC, then the University of Amsterdam, which is considered to be the top university for communications in the world. My, my most options are in Spain, actually. And what program do you want to transfer into? Well, journalism, of course. That's my main goal, but then I'm also open to the communications option, the advertising and public relations program to programs too. I'm pretty open. What do you think is going to be maybe better about the education over there? Have you seen something that you like or something that makes you think like, oh, this is definitely going to be better than what I'm getting here? Job opportunities, first of all, because the job market here is really tough to find a good internship. Then the faculty. I think the faculties abroad are great. The experience to have an internship at well-known companies. For example, one of the universities I'm, that I'm applying to has internships with Real Madrid. That's always really cool. Imagine having Real Madrid internship in your resume. I mean, making connections, making connections with, with big names, with people from all over the world and also the quality of the education and the price tag too. It's much cheaper for me to go over there and study than stay here. I think it would be better to have that experience live by myself, to learn how to do things, to be more independent, especially me being an only child. I've obviously been spoiled my whole, spoiled my whole life. So that's gonna help me develop new social skills, life skills, survival skills, especially to how, how to how to be an adult. That bit you mentioned about the price tag, like I think most people will assume that studying abroad is gonna be way more expensive than staying here to study, so. It depends which country. In Europe it's much more cheaper than the US. Thinking a little bit about the process of transferring then so far. Like, can you can you walk me through sort of what you've had to do so far to get to the point where you're ready to apply? Because you're gonna be applying soon, right? Yeah, yeah it's so, yeah, it's, it's very close. So, <laughs> like, what have you had to do? Walk us through the steps. Well, first of all, shout out to my lovely counselor, Pilar. Pilar uh, sent me this list of universities with different programs 
in different countries, whereas Australia, Europe, the UK. And I had to choose the ones who were more appealing to me. Then we filtered that list into 12 universities. We searched for each requirement for me to apply there. And that's it. I had to make essays too for the UK and in the US. Shout out to Alyssa who's helping with that. <laughs> And so when you were going through and looking at those different curriculums from these different programs, what were you looking for? What did you see that you liked? I was looking for a program that, was, that is bilingual, first of all, because English is much more appealing for me because my education has been in English always. It's easier for me to express myself in English. Then I was looking for the basics of how to be a complete journalist and programs that have good internships. What do you think are the qualities that a good journalist should have then? Wow. Oh, such a tough question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into it. <laughs> wow. A, a good journalist needs to have ethical and eth ethical values. Then curiosity. Curiosity to maybe look, look more into some topics. Investigate. Investigate a lot. A good journalist should read always read it's important to read to know about history because how can you tell something that that's happening on the present without knowing the causes what's happened in the past what late what led to that so you're going to be applying to universities i think next month have you already started applying or i'm doing the paperwork because of course if you're especially if you're going to spain you guys need to get your papers done over there, then go to Ministerio de Educación, then go to Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores, then go to the Embassy of Spain, and obviously that takes time. Especially if you're in the middle of a pandemic, things take to tend to take a little bit more of time. I'm gonna apply on December, I think, because I, we've made changes on the list, because I need to take my English exam, the IELTS. Ah, well, of course you guys need to take your designated like second language exam if you're going to study in an English speaking country. The decision part is going to be tough because obviously I got to make the numbers and all of that. But in the end, I'm going to I'm going to live. I'm going to study wherever it's meant to be. How difficult has the process been for you? It's been pretty easy, to be honest. I tried to, to do the process alone with my mom. It drove us crazy. But since we got with score, Billy was like a, like an angel from that fell from the sky. She's been amazing with me. She's been really patient too, and she has guided me through the process. And she I've, and I've also asked for her advice for which university is going to be better for me, which university is going to have the things that I really want. So she's been really helpful with that and with the paperwork too. And Alyssa obviously has been amazing with the essays. We've shared amazing ideas and we got amazing results. Um, you know, I'm not trying to turn this into a score commercial, but like, <laughs> you're welcome to say more nice things about us if you want. But no, it's awesome. I'm glad you're having a good time with it and that it's making it easier for you. It's been really fun. Good. That's what I want. We did a lot of research, right? Talking to people who've been in other places. You know, other ones that have five letters in their name and, you know, sometimes numbers and stuff. Like, you know, the thing is, most people's complaint was like, they didn't feel like it was about them. Yes! And that's what I think is missing from a lot of this. And it's like, I want you to feel like it's your experience, because it should be. It is. Of course, you're the one that studies, not your parents, not your counselor. You're, you're the one. I've had a tough time with that. My mom is a lawyer, so. From your list, like, what would be your number one, like, this is the one I really want to get into? <laughs> Can I say all of them? Yeah, go nuts. Okay. Wow. I think the ones in the UK. I think the, the UK is a pretty amazing option for journalism. You've got The Guardian, you've got BBC over there. That could, that should be a great experience. And well, personally, I want to get into sports journalism. I'm not a petrol head, but I'm fascinated with the, pers with the people who are behind the helmet in this Formula One world. So I want to specialize in that. And obviously the UK is the birthplace of Formula One. So imagine working next to, I don't know, Max Verstappen or whatever. That could be amazing. 
Yeah, that would be fun, obviously, right? To get actually, you know, oh, insider. Ferrari, who knows? I mean, <laughs> they ought to just, I feel like if your last name is Ferrari, they should just give you a job automatically. <laughs> like, me? you just walk in and be like, here's my ID, like, where do I go? <laughs> just, hire me. <laughs> I mean, clearly there's a connection here. Is there anything that you're maybe a little worried or anxious about? Living alone. Okay, Living why? Alone. Because my family's pretty big and I'm obviously used to being around a lot of people. My mom had 16 siblings. <laughs> yeah, and they've got kids and they've got kids. So we're like the nuclear family is about 40, 50 people. So not having that. I don't know, each month, each Christmas, it's gonna be hard. And me being an only child, friends were like family. Shout out to Fabi, Camila, and Isa, who are my best friends. And well, learning the survival skills, I don't know how to turn, to turn off a fire or if something breaks, learn how to fix it. Then the financial stuff, I'm worried about that. Like, okay. How do, I, how do I administrate my money? That's something that should be taught at schools, to be honest. On the other hand though, what are the things maybe you're looking forward to? Like, what are you excited about? Meeting new people, making good connections, friendships, learning about the culture, how things work over there, how, how the, world, the work culture is over there. Then I'm excited for the new courses, the faculty. I think everything's gonna be amazing, but obviously I'm gonna miss my house, my school, University of Lima, who has been a lovely experience, is a really good university, but sometimes you gotta fly high. So what advice would you give to anybody who's maybe thinking about doing this or you know, contemplating like, okay, maybe I wanna study abroad, what would you tell them to do? Contact score. <laughs> yeah. I didn't tell her to say that, I swear. <laughs> I, I swear I wasn't a setup, I promise. I'm not trying to, do, I did wanna turn this into a commercial. <laughs> No, well, of course, speak to your parents first, then research about your degree, research what, what you want to do in the future, what option is more suitable for you. Then, if you spoke to your parents, research, then find a program that matches your program over here. In, this, in the case that you're transferring like me, you should try um, to match the programs. What was something that surprised you? The great equivalents, because first of all, I went to this company, a lovely company that told me your grades aren't good enough. So I was like, oh, so all the work that I did in school, it was like all for nothing because my grades aren't good enough. But it was a lie because the great equivalents, like the international equivalent to, to the Peruvian grades is obviously favoring the student. So it turns out that my grades were amazing. So I could apply to any university I wanted to. Whether it's you know Italy, Spain, UK, whatever, I, I would love to come and actually like see you in a year or so and see how it's going. That could be amazing. Yeah. Amazing content. I know, we already did one video like that actually. Um, yeah, you guys can check out the one I did with Julie at University of Cincinnati. Oh, I know. Yeah. She's pretty nice. Yeah, she is pretty nice. Any last words, anything else you want to tell us? Anything else you're thinking? Well, first of all, thank you to SCORE. It's been a lovely process. If you want to start your process, contact SCORE, they're the best. We are. And, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, it's been a lovely interview. Thank you yeah. for your time. Thank you, actually. Honestly, seriously, you're doing me a favor, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you for watching this interview, and if you want to be in an interview, please tell us, because we want to do more of these. And it's, I think, important to hear from actual students' perspectives, so having somebody here like Anansa to tell us about her experience and share her reasons for transferring and like what it's been like so far, I think is really helpful for a lot of people who might be thinking about the same thing, but just haven't decided to pull the trigger yet. So if you are thinking about pulling that trigger, go to prepwithscore.com to see more.